very much for having me today. Um, as you can see, I'm going to be talking to you about breaking the mould. Now let me talk to you a little bit just about myself, uh, just to introduce myself. So, um, as Ian said, I, I am a lecturer at uh, Nottingham Trent University at the moment. Um, I'm a Doctor of Psychology. I did my uh, undergraduate degree uh, here at Nottingham in the psych Psychology Department. Um, and I also did a PhD here. Now, as part of my PhD, I went to work at the University of Auckland uh, in New Zealand, which was fantastic. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later. Now, my specialist or expertise um, is in eye tracking. Now, this is basically where we look in the world and why. Um, so, a saccade is a movement of the eye from one place to another. Now, when that eye movement is uh, still, then it is called a fixation. Now, Fiddley and Walker had uh, a model which showed us uh, where and when we move our eyes. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't keep this up. I'm really, really bored. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. One minute. psychology. I did do my degree at Nottingham. I did work in Auckland. As you can see here, this is me with an eye tracker on, so I am an expert in eye movements, but that's not what I'm going to talk to you about. Well, I am going to talk to you about breaking the mould, but this is not in terms of eye movements or eye movement patterns. This is in terms of stereotypes. So I am a lecturer in psychology, but I'm probably not the kind of lecturer that I tried to portray at the beginning. Not even when I'm lecturing my own students, I lecture like this, but with more clothes on normally. <laughs> so, not only do I have this kind of stereotype about me when I am a lecturer, when I'm a psychologist, when I say to people, oh, I'm a psychologist, the first thing people say to me, oh my God, can you read my mind? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh my God, are you analysing me? I say, like, yeah, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have this stereotype about me because I am a pole dancer. Now I am um, a UK um, championship pole dancer. Um, I'm in the UK competition this year. I'm here to kind of talk to you about how I got to where I am and why. So here is a, a, a little insight into my extracurricular activities. I am. Um, I like adrenaline sports, put it that way. This is in New Zealand. This is when I was doing my PhD. This is the canyon swing. Now, the canyon swing is kind of like an anti bungee. You don't have a bungee rope. <laughs> you just get chucked off the side of the canyon. And you have a rope, but when you get to the bottom, it just swims you across to the other side. I also like long distance cycling. So, if anyone is uh, familiar with Nottingham and um, lives here, they're probably familiar with the great Nottinghamshire bike ride. I started doing kind of 50 miles, 75, 90s. The Oxford to Cambridge was 106, I think. And uh, this is something that I really like doing. And you get to raise a bit of money for charity. Tough guy. Okay. I don't know if anyone is familiar with tough guy. Um, 
It is known as the world's toughest assault course. It is an eight-mile army assault course. But that's eight miles as the crow flies. So you go up and down your mudslides, you've got underwater swims, you've got barbed wire, you've got fields of fire, you've got electric fences. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it is totally my kind of thing. Now the problem when I did it is this year, um, it was snowing, it was minus two degrees, and all the lakes were iced over, and you had to break the ice before you could swim through them. And uh, it was basically very cold. This is my, part, my running part of the day. He actually got a hypothermia, um, as did 10% of the people that took part that year. About 650 people. St. John's don't like us. <laughs> so, what is pole dancing? Well, as I say, pole dancing has this kind of ne negative stereotype that associated with it. Now, if you don't know what pole dancing is, or if maybe you're one of those people that secretly holds that stereotype, it is a mixture of ballet, um, ballet shoes, um, and um, gymnastics on a, a vertical bar. So this is the kind of stuff that I do. I'm an aqua pole dancer. Um, I normally do two, tall pole competitions, so about 15 to 20 feet high, and I do doubles aqua pole. So that is, it's very kind of set de soleil. You have two people, one pole. That sounds like something you get on YouTube. <laughs> um, and uh, you use each other's body weight to balance yourselves out. Um, so at any one time, um, either no one, no one holds on with their hands, you may have just one person with a thigh grip and another person hanging off of them, for example. So I got myself a pole. Actually, I have six of them. Um, but when I first got my portable pole, it said, can be taken anywhere. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so <laughs> I took it to normal places, like garden parties and the gym and stuff. And then that got me boring, so um, I decided to set myself a challenge. And I was taking part in the Three Peaks, which if anyone wasn't, isn't aware, it is climbing the three highest peaks in the UK in uh, under 30 hours, or you can do it in under 24 hours. <coughs> now, Ben Nevis is the highest of these, and um, I took a 35k pack with me. Uh, that includes this pole, this pole um, and uh, water, food, clothes, etc. Now, 35k is it's about five and a half stone, okay? That's a small person I have on my back for eight hours. Um, but I did it, we completed the challenge. Um, I became the first person to pull dance on Ben Nevis. <laughs> okay, so I'm part of Scottish tourism, really. <laughs> um, so when I came back from Nevis, this is all for charity, um, and when I came back from Nevis, uh, it didn't take long before I wanted to do something else. And I had already signed up to uh, a charity cycle. So we were going to cycle 400 uh, kilometres, across Kenya in five days. Which for me, I need more of a challenge than that. So I took a poll with me. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it was the, the charities were uh, cancer charities, therefore it was identical to this, but it was pink. And um, I took it um, with me to Kenya. We cycled our 400k. And um, I will never look at hills the same way again. <laughs> Um, undulations in Kenya are mountains in England, okay? You don't want to see the mountains in Kenya. Um, it was 107 degrees, there were tropical storms, um, there were potholes like craters, but it was an amazing, amazing experience. So this is uh, just an insight into my time for this Lake Victoria, where we finished. And um, out of all the uh, women that cycled, as a group, we raised 1.6 million pounds for charity. Um, it was three cancer charities, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and ovarian cancer. So the question is, why did I do this? Um, well, there are a few reasons, really. First of all, I don't have a lot of money, but I have enough money to get by. So if I can help out those um, that need it more than I do, then I see that as a good thing. So, £1.6 million isn't to be sniffed at. Unfortunately, when this hit the national press earlier in the year, 
especially at Daily Mail readers, didn't see it that way. Uh, you put pole dancing in the Daily Mail, you get hate mail, okay? Um, it, is, it is not nice, um, but it's something that I've learned to deal with uh, because of these stereotypes that are associated with pole dancing. Um, for, for the last four and a half years, I've been called every name under the sun. Um, I've had to change email addresses many, many times. I had somebody try and get me fired from my day job um, just because you don't, they don't understand. There was also a personal challenge in it, um, in that uh, I have a nerve condition called neuralgia parasitica. It's a spinal nerve um, condition where I have no feeling in my right hand side. So the, both the, the nevus and the Kenny cycle were kind of personal challenges to me. They hurt, <laughs> but um, I got through it um, in the allotted time and I'm still alive. So. Um, also, there's a, there's a personal experience to it. Now, I didn't know it at the time when I first signed up to these uh, charity events, but I have since had a very close encounter with cancer myself um, and come out the other side. Um, and I think now it means more to me than it has ever done in the past. So I'm really glad that other people can benefit from the £1.6 million pounds that we raised for these charities. And I think the biggest thing is um, breaking the mould. So going right back to the beginning of the talk, um, when I talk about breaking the mould, I'm talking about kind of trying to break down these negative stereotypes. In, in general, um, I mean, I, I can deal with people thinking I'm a mind reader um, as a job or that I'm analysing them. Um, I quite like the idea that I freak some people out. But what I don't like is the negative stereotypes that, that come unnecessarily with pole dancing because of its past which is actually quite ironic because it started in places like Africa and it was for males and it was a rite of passage. Um, and it was a, um, an athletic event um, using totem poles. And it was only when it was taken into kind of the sex industry that it got that stereotype. It was just not managed to shape yet. So the reason I became the first person to pole dance on Nervous and bothered carrying 35 Ks around with me for however long. And the reason I took my pole through Kenya, was to try and push the idea of um, pole fitness rather than pole dancing. So I do own my own company now, I set up on my own. Um, I do have a day job as well. Um, but I set up my company to push pole into the fitness industry. I set up 10 months ago uh, with one class at Virgin Active. Um, I now have every major gym and health club in Nottingham. Um, and um, private lessons um, and some community halls. And I'm hopefully showing people what it's all about. So I really would like people, if they take nothing else away from this talk, apart from the fact you spent the last 14 minutes watching someone in their underwear, pretty much, <laughs> um, I would really like you to take away with you what pole dancing is actually about and try and influence your opinions a little bit. So I've got like a minute um, video just to kind of sum up everything I've said in the last 14 minutes. <laughs> 